All right, welcome to Victory the Podcast, Rams Victory Edition, sponsored by Bud Light, and we have Super Bowl champion Sony Michelle. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? We're doing good, good, man. Bro. Thanks for joining us. I mean, you stole some Rams fans' hearts. You scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl, and now you're playing for the Rams. Is is what's that like? And if I mean, <laughs> how great would it be to get one there? Also, yeah, it would be awesome. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I mean, that's what we play the game for. That's why I'm here. Um, we have a great team, great coaching staff, great support system. So, why not? I love it. Yeah. You you got all. I, I mean, it's it, it all sounds great. Now we know we know Belichick a little bit. We had his son on our set entourage when we were doing the show. Give us a little, just a little. What's the difference between Belichick and McVay? Um, I mean, they're two completely different people um, as far as their age difference, um, their coaching styles. Um, man, personalities are different. Are you able to say which one you enjoy more, or is that a tough question? <laughs> no, nah, that's that's that's. <laughs> I mean, that's a loaded question. they're both. Res- uh, I'll say McVay's. they're both. They're both respected um, for yeah, who they are. No Definitely respected on a personal level. Um, it looks like Coach McVay might be uh, a little more laid back than Belichick, or maybe a little bit more fun to be around. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> Um, you'd be surprised though, you know, um, Belichick is coach. He does, you know, like to crack jokes sometimes, especially really? if you're around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, they don't show that on TV. That's nah, sure. nah, he don't show it on boring TV. Boring press conferences. Well, yeah. he was cool when we, he was on the set. He was great. I love Belichick. He, he, he was very good to us. And so was, so was Brady. So what was it like, you know, being in the huddle with Brady and then how great was it to see his work ethic and everything like that? Uh, it, was, it was a dope experience, especially being in a huddle with the GOAT, um, a guy that yeah. played for so many years. I remember, I remember seeing something where it was like his first Super Bowl. I was like six years old. <laughs> um, and for me to be able to be in a huddle with him, it was, it was, it was kind of dope. And so, I mean, obviously you, you come from new England. What, aside from the weather, what, what, what are really the big differences? I mean, you got two very well run high end organizations, but what, what are some of the, just kind of the differences, is it just the weather and just the lifestyle in general or what? Uh, it's the culture, um, the culture around here, the culture in new England is, is totally different. And it's all based on the guys that you have in the locker room. Um, you know, their style, um, the way they like to operate, uh, the players, the coaches. It's just, it's just totally different, two different cultures. I, I would say that's the biggest thing. Hey, after you have a, like a really tough game, Monday morning, what are you in an ice bath? Yeah. Just trying to like all the bumps and bruises or? What's recovery like? Um, recovery for me, I like to kind of keep my body moving a little bit. Um, really... <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that kind of stay away from the ice unless I have like swelling or something like that. I like to get in heat, keep my body warm, moving, activated to just try to work out some of the soreness. Is the soreness all week? I mean, I, I was telling these guys before we got on, I played the last tackle football game I played was like 33 years old with a bunch sure of that idiots. that was a real nail bunch biter. Of, <laughs> bunch of idiots from high school and I couldn't walk for two weeks. I mean, are you feeling it every day? And you, when you get back on Sunday, are you still feeling last week? Um, it depends what kind of game you had previous. Yeah. Uh, if you toted the rock about 30 times, uh, you're going to probably feel it majority of the week. <laughs> um, and it all depends on how well you're getting taken care of or how well you're taking care of yourself throughout the week. Um, if you're, if you have had a, a heavy load in the game Sunday and you're still pounding it, pounding it throughout the week in practice, you're going to feel some of it being left over but if you, you got a uh, like we have here um a great staff that makes sure we're getting turned over pretty well uh making sure we're getting the right stuff in our bodies the 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 right stuff um when we're in a weight room training room those kind of things even in the practice on the practice field i think coach, coach does a great job with you know seeing how much yardage and and, and using that information the data that that they're being given um, to use it to our advantage to try to help us, you know, maybe take some of the load off. I think and obviously, off. obviously, it's your your body. You, you can do whatever you want. But from the from a training st- staff standpoint, 
Do you kind of lead the charge with that when you're like, hey, listen, I want to be in heat as opposed to the ice bath? I mean, or do they just kind of work with you or do they heavily recommend? What, what, what's, what's that like working with the training staff? Uh, it's amazing because they're very transparent. They listen um, and they give great advice. Um, for me, for a guy that I would say plays you know, a good bit of football, um, I had to figure out what works for me. Um, I think some right. guys maybe don't know what works for them. I know what works for me. And um, they give recommendations, and um, I give them kind of what's been working for me in the past, what can I change, what can I do differently. And there's certain things that I came here that I'm starting to do that I have never done, and I feel like it's real successful. And there's certain things that I'm sticking to that I, I'm kind of like, I'm basically using what I've done and basically a little bit of what, what the information that they're giving me and some of the stuff that they're giving me to, to help me just kind of get, get better. Well, when you were running back in high school? Running back, yeah. You were, okay. I think I was put on this earth just to run the football. Right. <laughs> right. And how annoying How annoying are fans about fantasy football? Because I'm one of those guys. I mean, I would never say anything. You know what? How um, annoying is it? Um, they're annoying. But, <laughs> but I have to say so this. You, I, have, I have to say this. So my girlfriend started playing fantasy for her dad. Oh, boy. And I had to do the draft process. So I kind of started, I kind of started following it a little bit, and I was like, "Yo, draft this dude. He's a sleeper. Like nobody's like." Um, and then as I started following it, I started getting pissed off. Like, "Yo, this dude suck." But then I was like, "Oh, I kind of see where these fans coming from. It's not really reality. You know, situations are different. You know, you can't." Did your girlfriend draft you? <laughs> she did. <laughs> But how'd that go? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So you actually did. You actually sat through the fantasy draft. Like, trust me, nobody's gonna be watching this, guys. But I, I just, I just need to hear this now. You come home and your girl, whether you had a good game or not, she's not talking to you if you didn't do. Not even a good game, by the way. Even if you guys won, if you didn't put it in the. Don't hold it against me, because nine times out of ten, I'm probably telling her, just leave me on the bench for now. <laughs> right, you just don't want to hear it. But you, so you drafted your own, drafted a team. You got to draft yourself. No, you would draft yourself in five different positions for actually, sure. I actually, I, oh, I did. I didn't want to draft myself. She actually grabbed the phone and was like, "We're drafting you." And yeah, drafted me. I mean, it's, I like, bad, it's a bad omen to not draft I yourself. Say, hey, not draft yourself. It's up to you. So, awesome. so you got you get caught up in like checking the scores because it's her, right? And she's into it, and you're like. I don't, know, I don't know. I just thought he was a better tight end. What are you having to say? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's pretty funny. That is awesome. And outside of football, so you're a rapper. You you got an album? You, can you freestyle for us or what? <laughs> you know what? I used to rap. Um, I kind of I retired before I even started. <laughs> I retired. What before, happened? Before my career took off, I retired. Um, that's I got, like Conley's career. I got, yeah, in college, I had a lot to talk about. I don't know why, but. Um, I have writer's block, man. I, I got in the studio and I didn't have anything to write about. So oh. what's happening in the dog? Yeah, don't say writer's block. Don't. Just, yeah, I'm so, kidding, bro. I'm kidding. Kind do of you retired. have do you do you have a studio at, at your house? I did. He's retired. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, but they, but, they, but it never goes away. Goes so you did yes. have a studio in the house. I did. Um, when I got traded, that's when I finally got rid of it. So it took me that long to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good though. Hey, listen, you're in LA. If you ever want to come uh, to the studio and, and, and lay down a uh, lay down a track, we got we got we got a music studio. For you. Now you start start you start a label we're now. Starting around, we're starting a, <laughs> you're trying to get them to do a podcast. <laughs> so Sony, I mean, we're we we like to ask everybody. Do you, did you watch Entourage? Do you have any idea? Does who Kevin Dillon look Dillon? remotely familiar to you. I haven't. So before I got I got on here, I said you know I, I haven't really watched it heard of it. It sounds familiar, but yes. sounds familiar. I don't know much about it. We need to Check get you on it. Gotta cut him Check a it out. Reel. Yeah, we gotta get, we gotta get you on it now. We're gonna get you on the reboot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna check it out. And definitely check but you it gotta out. watch the first uh, first show. You does, know? And does Conley kind of look like a mutant version of uh, McVeigh? Do you think or no? I could pull off McVeigh for Halloween? I think if he can. hits the gym, I mean, if I spiked can. up my hair and grew out the beard, I think I can be, uh, you know, I mean, I'm better looking than him, but, Whoa. <laughs> well, you know, well, he's, he's got bigger shoulders. What do you want to say? Oh, a lot bigger. <laughs> All right. And last question. What, what, what's, the, what's the huddle like? Is there ever any fun and jokes and, and like laughs in the huddle or is it all like everybody yelling and screaming numbers and assignments and all that kind of stuff? Um, the huddle's pretty, pretty chill. Pretty chill. Um, 
you know, for me, I'm like listening to the quarterback because the plays are extremely long and wordy. So like I, <laughs> I miss one word and I'm 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 all messed up. So I'm kind of locked yeah. in in the huddle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. how hard is it to learn a new playbook when you come from one team to another? I mean, you know, is it like starting from scratch? It, it, it definitely is, um, especially if you're coming from two different systems with two different terminologies. So it's like it, it, it can get foreign to you. Um, you hear certain words and you're like, dang, we used to call that something else over here. But now <laughs> right. it's like so you, it's almost like relearning a whole new terminology, a whole new system. And I think I underestimated. I thought, you know, oh, I got some experience. I'm ready. Like, but, you know, with great coaching staff, Coach TB, um, I think he did a tremendous job with, you know, kind of getting me caught up, especially with me missing camp here, getting me caught up. And I feel pretty comfortable. Where I'm and, and you got the Patriots coming in in a few weeks. So do they, I mean, does the coaching staff ask you anything like whether you might know what they might do or anything like that or no? That's a great question. Do you offer insight to the Rams as to what the Patriots may do? To the, but what you mean? When when you're playing the Patriots, like do do they does the coaching staff of the Rams ask you if you know any of their tendencies or any of the things that they might do? Right, or like that's Belichick's not-, not gonna run the ball here for sure. You know. <laughs> um, the problem is, is, I think these coaches know so much already that. Right. I'm sure they're like. They're not coming to you. Yeah. <laughs> They're not coming. They're studying their Unless film. they're like, yo, can you tell me a little bit about this guy? How does he play? But most of their tendencies are on film. They like coaches are does do a tremendous job with that kind of stuff. And they kind of any are you and are you excited to play the Pats, or is that just another game? Or is it like, oh, I'll see some of my old friends, or or how does that? Uh we won't play the Pats this year. I thought you do. Oh, I'm in the Chargers play. Oh, uh, you know what? I think, I, you know what? You know what? I'm going to the Chargers patch. I made a mistake. I hate that they share the stadium. My bad. Nobody goes to the Charger games that Charger fans. Anyway, sorry about that. So, um, all right. Go ahead, Kevin. Take it up from there. I screwed up on my research. <laughs> Great question, Doug. Great question. Um, no, I guess, I, guess, I guess my question is, you know, you see so much about watching, watching film. You hear these references. How much film will you watch on a team hours wise right from monday to to saturday how much film will you watch on the team that you're getting ready to play five hours two hours what, what, what do you think i'll probably um uh, besides from being in actual meetings like on my own would you say no no in the meetings like as as a group when you go and how much do, do the backs and do the running backs and all the backs sit and watch film with the coaches watching film from the moment we basically walk in this building like, <laughs> till we walk like in the building like let's say meet and start with eight o'clock we're watching film from eight o'clock till we hit the field at two we we'll probably have like an hour break so i'm not probably an hour break in wow. between so whatever the math wow. is on that. i mean is that exhausting i mean is that exciting do you are you watching film and going wow i'm really learning this here or is this like wow how much more like, give me the ball I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I, I used to think just give me the ball um I won't have to, er, earlier in my career, but now I kind of can, especially in the position I'm in now of coming to a new team, it kind of helps me. It, it, it slows things down for me because um, I'm already worried about the plays. Now, by me watching, the more film I can watch, it'll make more sense to me, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, and, no, and, totally. and how much does it change things for, for a team when a new quarterback comes in? I mean, obviously there's differences, but... What what, what is, what's the temperature change there when you bring in a, a new guy running the offense? What you mean like a new? Uh, what you mean? Yeah, when a new quarterback comes in, right? I mean, it's you know, so right from right, golf to Stafford, right? They're but both. yeah, but I mean, is there? It, it just generally speaking, not even about the Rams, but in general, when when there's either a head coach change or a quarterback change, how how big of an adjustment is that for a team? Um, I think it's a it's a it's a pretty big adjustment depending on the quarterback. Like I went from. Uh, Tom Brady to Cam Newton. And those are two completely different kind of quarterbacks. Their styles yeah, yeah. are different. So you kind of got to adjust to the way they play, the way and everybody have their own different type of leadership style. You know, they, they, they're leading the huddle. Um, and Tom's coming in. He's calling the play. Cam might come in and he might crack some jokes. He might clap everybody <laughs> up. You never know what he's going to give you. So, But I would say ultimately... You kind of get the same thing. As long as they're good leaders, you kind of get the same thing. Guys are w- willing to rally around the quarterback. 
um, and let the quarterback kind of lead the way. Nice. And so, la- so last question. I mean, you were on a Super Bowl winning team, so you know what the vibe of that feels like. Do you are you feeling that with this team? Does this feel like there's a special thing going on with this team? There is a very special thing going on with this football team, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, obviously, Super Bowl was so early to to kind of to dictate right. or kind of get a feel for, you know, where things may fall. Um, but then you got to like, stay healthy, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, I like where things are trending here. I mean, we have a good mm-hmm. team, good locker room, good coaching staff. I think as long as we keep keep stay focused and keep doing what we do um, and don't worry about anything else, I think we'll be fine. Awesome. Well, best of luck. We're excited. L.A. is excited. Sports are looking really, really up in L.A. right now. So uh, best of luck. And, uh, thanks for joining us, man. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Be well, Sony. Okay. Later. Victory the Podcast Rams edition brought to you by Bud Light. Thanks for joining us. All right, Sony, we'll see you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate you.